When we think of a loudspeaker driver, the most commonly used design is the first one that's going to come to your mind. That being the fixed magnet moving coil diaphragm thingy that you're probably using to listen to this video with. However, as many of you are aware, there are plenty of other ways to excite air in a wave-like fashion that don't involve a magnet and coil. One of those takes the form of the electrostatic speaker and today we're going to look at how they work and how they sound compared to conventional loudspeakers and why you don't see them used very often. In order to demonstrate this design I've got my hands on a pair of BenQ Trevolo Mark II speakers and I'll explain why these are perfect for what I'm wanting to show here later. So the majority of electrostatic speakers you've probably seen are antiques, uh, great large flat panels with a wooden frame and a stand. So what's actually going on inside those? If you've ever listened to one, you may have noticed that the sound appears to emit in a uniform fashion from the whole panel, which would be correct. The vibrating mass in these speakers is often one single large surface that spans the entire width and height of the panel. The clue to how it is moved is in its name, electrostatic attraction. You may have observed a similar effect by rubbing a balloon and sticking it to the wall or watching it raise someone's hair. Inside the panel there are five main components. Two stators, the diaphragm itself and two spars or spacers which are assembled to all together in like a delicious sandwich. The diaphragm, which is the bit that moves and creates the sound, is constantly charged with high voltage DC from an external supply, which is why most of these speakers uh, have their own mains power lead. Now, this strongly charged diaphragm is going to be attracted, just like the balloon, to any negatively charged material and it will repel positively charged objects. This is where the stators come in. They are connected to the amplifier's outputs through a step-up transformer. It converts the amplifier's sine wave output to a pair of high voltage signals of equal strength but opposite polarity, like full bridge. So when a sine wave is sent from the amplifier, it is split and boosted in voltage, so that while the rear stator grows more positively charged, the front stator grows more negatively charged. Thus, the positively charged diaphragm is thrust forward towards the front stator. It would keep going until it touched the front stator, causing a huge spark and plenty of damage, uh, which is the spar's job to stop the diaphragm far enough away to prevent arcing, but close enough to allow decent movement and displacement. So during the first half of the cycle, the sine wave, the diaphragm is thrust forward, and for the second half of the cycle it is thrown back towards the rear stator, thus creating vibration and exciting the air in front and behind of the diaphragm, creating sound. As with most things, there are pros and cons to this style of loudspeaker, and I'll go through the pros first. So pro number one, since the diaphragm is driven uniformly across its entire surface, it doesn't actually need to be rigid at all. In fact, many of these things are so light and thin that they are actually less dense than the air which they move. This is a massive advantage since the less physical mass a diaphragm has, the less it is affected by its own resonance. This also allows it to change directions incomprehensibly fast, following the finest details of the audio signal precisely. As a result of this agility, the need for crossovers, multiple drivers is totally removed, which come with their own phasing hurdles and headaches, so bringing the sound further from its true recorded form. Having one single surface tracing the entire signal containing vocal, mid-range and high frequencies with unparalleled accuracy is hard to give up once you've listened to it and experienced it in person. You may have noticed that I mentioned these speakers excite air both in front and behind the diaphragm. This is in the same nature as a conventional loudspeaker driver, except that the waves emitting from the rear of the cone are isolated by an enclosure, normally, to prevent them wrapping round and cancelling the desired waves coming from the front. In order for this cancellation to occur, usually the, the waveform needs to be long enough to reach around from the back of the driver to the front, which means that without an enclosure, the usable low frequency response is defined by the physical dimensions. The larger the driver, the lower the frequencies that can escape forward from the diaphragm or cone will be. By comparison, conventional loudspeaker drivers are pretty small when looking at electrostatic speaker panels. This is since their cones need to be stiff, and the larger they get, the harder it is for them to stop warping under load or building undesired cross resonances. Since an electrostatic speaker diaphragm is uniformly driven across its surface, it can essentially be as large as you like. 
As a result, although cancellation still occurs from the front and rear waves meeting, just like a normal uh, woofer without an enclosure, this happens at a considerably lower frequency than with conventional loudspeakers, giving them a very usable frequency response. There are other benefits of this dipolar radiation pattern. Since waves emitting towards the edge of the panel are cancelled sooner than those emitting from the centre, because they're closer to the, the rear, the dispersion uh, is very controlled. They beam more and much less information is emitted off axis and to the sides, that prevents wall reflections and it maintains a great stereo image when you're in the sweet spot. Moreover, with the correct placement, the waves emitting from the rear of the panel can reflect off of a wall, and in return, they return in phase with the waves coming from the front of the panel, and that reinforces the sound and adds depth. This all sounds fantastic, right? So why on earth isn't the world covered in these things? Well firstly, the SPL output is somewhat limited. In order to achieve a high, decent SPL, the diaphragm needs to travel a fair distance. In order to pull the diaphragm from a far resting position towards the stators, extremely high voltage is required on the diaphragm and the stators. When the sine wave reaches its highest or lowest point of the cycle, the potential difference in voltage between the stator and the diaphragm is at its greatest at the same time that the diaphragm is closest to the stator. This poses a huge risk of the electrons jumping the gap and arcing and damages the speaker and the amplifier. To prevent this, you put the spacers further back so the diaphragm can't get too close to the stators to arc, but now you've just limited the distance it can move and thus you've limited its max SPL, and so the cycle continues. Conventional loudspeakers only need to be a mere fraction of the size of the electrostatic speaker for the same output and displacement. As mentioned before, low frequency response is often lacking with electrostatics due to cancellation of the front and rear waves. So if you want to truly build a full range electrostatic speaker, the panel needs to be large enough that the lowest frequency you want to hear can't wrap around and cancel when you're in the sweet spot. Demands for strong deep bass are quite high these days, so the required size for this is often inconveniently large. And the last reason is treble dispersion can be a problem. I already mentioned that these speakers beam more than conventional drivers. When a sound has a wavelength that is small relative to the size of the speaker diaphragm producing it, so a small wavelength coming from a large surface that's vibrating, it tends to radiate over a narrow angle rather than dispersing widely into the room. And that means that the sweet spot for the listener to experience the full effect of the electrostatics is quite small. And simply moving your head to the left or right can dramatically change the high-end tonality uh, and characteristics of the sound. This effect is made more and more apparent the larger the panel size, and since pretty much every other drawback of these speakers can be alleviated by making larger panels, this then becomes the main problem. So that's given you a quick outline of electrostatics, and now I want you to hear some. These are some of the coolest portable speakers I have seen in a long time. They utilize two electrostatic panels which cover the upper frequencies including the important vocal range where detail and clarity is very important. Uh, and as they are fairly small panels, they are reinforced by powerful accurate bass drivers in an enclosure featuring passive radiators to maximize the output for these size. The crossover has been actively set and phased perfectly between the driver and the panels so that and the results are actually very impressive. You, you do not get a sense of two separate sources of sound, it comes at you from one virtual entity. Here are some tracks played solely by these speakers, some lossless, some mp3 and some streamed, and recorded using two Behringer ECM 8000 RTA microphones. For this first listen, I'm going to use two speakers in duo mode, turning one purely into left and one purely into right, and this gives a beautiful stereo image. All right, so I've got these set up in a typical living room environment. Um, it's not acoustically the best environment because we have wooden floors, we have uh, obviously concrete walls and no sound deadening there, but there is some furniture around so it should help out a little bit. In order to get you to hear what I'm hearing, the best way that I thought to be able to do this was a pair of RTA microphones positioned relatively close to the speakers. Um, the reason for that is because obviously the sound that you hear is going to be dictated by the device to which you're listening on, whether you're listening with speakers or headphones. Now, I am going to get a beautiful stereo image sitting in the middle between these two speakers. However, if I put a microphone there in the middle, you're not going to get the stereo image when you listen to it back because that's not how it works. In order for you to get a stereo image from this recording, I'm going to have to record the speakers up relatively close with RTA microphones. 
and then when you listen on your headphones or on your own speaker system, the left and right channels will be separated enough for you to get an idea of the stereo image. Now because this video is going to be viewed back through YouTube, which compresses the audio quality considerably, um, I don't see there a great deal of point using a high quality lossless style source material for um, listening. So I'm going to be using what you might most commonly use, you know, streaming services, SoundCloud, YouTube, etc. So you can get a real idea of what these are going to sound like, you know, in a real world environment. Uh, you're not always going to be listening to lossless files, um, and most people generally don't just through convenience. There are obviously audio files that will listen solely to um, even streaming services like Tidal. Uh, it's not quite the same as listening through uh, a true lossless file, but it's not far off. Um, and to record off of the RTA microphones, uh, I have a simple um, DI box which is providing phantom power to the condenser mics and then out of that into a Boss Micro VR, uh, BR recorder which is recording in WAV format. So the recording from the microphones is lossless but by the time that you hear it through compression for YouTube and your own audio speakers it will probably sound a bit different but this is the best that we're going to get. Now in order to get these speakers to work in stereo, they have what's called a duo mode, uh, which where you can turn one of them on and then the other, and then um, hold a few buttons down and the two will pair up as a stereo pair. I've already done this, and so just for convenience, I want to show you how easy it is. Um, once you've already done the duo mode setup, you can just turn one of them on, and then go along to the other one over here, turn the other one on, and they automatically find each other and you get a beep as confirmation and they automatically connect to the last known Bluetooth device if it's in range. There you go, there was a little beep to confirm duo mode and it's already connected to my phone because the screen's lit up. So we're now connected by Bluetooth and in duo mode. Um, it's super convenient. The, the Bluetooth connectivity I find on these is some of the best that I've ever experienced. There are little to no dropouts that I've experienced even on a very far range and um, the instantaneous connection is, is brilliant and the duo mode works flawlessly as well so I'm very impressed with the uh, quality of the Bluetooth um, circuits in these and the receivers antennas etc I'm gonna go ahead and play some demo tracks variety of stuff some electronics some acoustic um, they are not um, licensed free music so I don't know if this video will stay monetized but I don't really care about that it's all about education and giving uh, you an idea of what these sound like so uh, let's go ahead and hit the first track You're going on a journey And your route is laid out plain Going where the sun shines every day No more heartache, no more pain Don't pack those bags too full, my friend Make sure you're traveling light I've taken up of my love with you
confirmed to you. This is definitely coming through the uh, microphones and not a recorded track playing over the video. This, this microphone here. This is, this is this microphone here. Hello. Oh, that's crazy. It's me. I was wondering if after all these years you'd like... If I go into a uh, frequency generator app on the phone, because uh, I'm sure there'll be some people watching this game that, that, that are thinking, oh, he's overlaid the original file uh, over the video to make it sound like it's better than it is. Uh, that's not the case. So you can hear the, the woofers distort here. If I just go down, start and low, if I play like a lowish frequency, like let's say 66 hertz, why not? Okay, so you can you can hear that. That's that's the distinct tone of the woofer. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah, these things they are very very good for what they are in terms of um, sort of bass response for their from the, for their size. Um, but obviously, if you try and throw side waves through them at a high amplitude uh, the woofers are going to max out and it's a little passive radiator design so um, they're not super crazy room filling bass but they're very natural and uh, you don't miss it when you're listening to the sorts of musics that we've been uh, we've been demoing today and and for those of you that did require a higher bass output um, there is a line out which is full range and you can use that to connect to an aftermarket subwoofer So you can use these as a 2.1 style setup have these as the uh, the two fronts and then you can line out to a subwoofer um, on line level which should have uh, the uh, low pass filter built in or some kind of amplifier with low pass or crossover then amplifier etc you can basically hook that line out up to anything so this track i'm actually going to play at full volume because it's normalized slightly lower than some of the others Let's just do a, uh, a cheeky phase test. This one's pretty cool for you to hear if you've not heard before. ...is used to determine relative polarity. My voice is in phase now and should sound coherent, natural, and should be placed in the center of the sound stage. My voice is out of phase now and should sound diffused, be difficult to locate, and may lose low frequency response. Yeah, so uh, this track has some awesome drum improvisation which sounds fantastic through these speakers.
another fun test I thought would be would to be record something original, just random messing around on the guitar, uh, through the microphones that are being used to pick up the Ben Q's, um, so that you can hear what it's really meant to sound like in real life. So this is just a real life mm. instrument in front of these microphones. And then I'll play it back through the Ben Q's and I'll chop between the original and the recorded um, through the speakers. So you can hear the difference that the speaker makes to the recording. I'm not the best guitar player in the world. <laughs> probably do just something real quick and uh, now let's um, play that back through the BenQ speakers and see how different it sounds pull the track off the recorder and uh, email it to myself so let's pl uh, hit play and have a listen <laughs> and then the bass is mono to the drivers and passive radiators. Um, so just to confirm that this can still sound very impressive with just the one of them, if you are sitting uh, sort of like in front of it, maybe if you're sitting on the couch here, um, it still gives you a good stereo image from the size unit that this is and a lovely quality tone. Let's do the same test again we did last time. <laughs> You're going on a journey And your route is laid out plain Going where the sun shines every day No more heartache, no more pain Don't pack those bags too full, my friend Be sure you're traveling light And taking up of my love with you Keep you warm at night It's got this heart inside it The postage is my soul Contains a message for millions Said keep don't go there you go. Well, I hope that's given you a cool overview of electrostatic speakers. Now, obviously, these aren't going to be able to produce the same results as your large floor standing panel electrostatics. But this is a brilliant and beautiful implementation of the technology into a modern device that is convenient and portable. Um, I have never heard a Bluetooth speaker that sounds as good as this. There are ones that go louder, but in terms of actual clarity and the natural sound, this is the best one that I've heard. And I've listened to all sorts from um, Bose, BNO, and like just all sorts of different very fancy Bluetooth speakers. And this is the nicest sounding one that I have ever heard. Um, it's also got really convenient features like the built in microphone on the front for if you get a call and it's got a call answer and decline button on the top uh, these things the panels fold out and fold away for easy transportation it's just a really really useful and well built um, great sounding Bluetooth speaker and so I thought that was a good one to show you on the channel because it's one that you are maybe more likely to be inclined to buy than these great big large panel um, speakers for your hi-fi um, so I wanted to try and show you something that is a bit more realistic that you might actually end up owning at some point I mean it also has a line input uh, for 
available on AUX cable, so you can connect up older music devices or even like a, a record deck, a vinyl deck. And it actually has, I haven't talked about this, but it's got, a, uh, it's got a, a USB connector. So you can hook this up to your laptop or MacBook and it uses, this is the sound card, it has its own sound card in here, so that you can listen to uh, lossless music through the laptop and it sends it via data to this, which then is a DAC, converts it into analog for the speaker to play the lossless audio. So that is the best way to get the best sound out of these. I didn't bother doing that on video for you because after compression you will be able to hear the difference through YouTube but if you want the ultimate experience with these to experience the electrostatic panels like in their ultimate form then hook these up to a laptop or MacBook listen to some lossless tracks uh, and let the speakers do the decoding themselves and the battery life in these lasts for ages I mean all of these tests I did were on battery power and it was still showing like the 100% or you know the uh, above 75% um, uh, color which is the blue color on the top surrounding the uh, power uh, power button so yeah it's got a really really long battery life even at high output levels so I hope you enjoyed and I'll catch you in the next video